If you're a Republican presidential candidate, campaign staffer, or political reporter, get ready for some corn, some pork, maybe a visit to the state fair, because the chances are good you're heading to Iowa. The state has a small population, but still commands a huge amount of power when it comes to presidential politics, at least on the Republican side. That's because the Iowa caucus is the first contest of the 2024 primary season. And while it may not always predict the ultimate winner of the nomination, it has a history of shaking things up in the race and often giving second-tier candidates a vital boost. So in a crowded field, and 2024 is looking very crowded, Iowa also provides the earliest opportunity for a candidate to break away from the pack. That explains why we're seeing this current Republican field swarm the state. Ron DeSantis' first stop after a glitchy Twitter live stream? Iowa. Campaigning there at the very same time? GOP frontrunner Donald Trump. Mike Pence will formally kick off his 2024 bid next weekend. Where? Where do you ask? You guessed it. Iowa. And Nikki Haley has held more than 20 events in Iowa since launching her campaign. But will these visits actually translate to votes? And how important will the results in Iowa really be in the larger race for the White House? For that, I want to bring in my next guest, Iowa expert and chief politics reporter for the Des Moines Register, Brianne Fonnensdale. Brianne, thank you so much for taking some time to spend with me today. I know you're busy there in the state. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Happy to join you. So if you talk to people nationally, they will tell you, most people, it feels like Trump is a lock to win. It's not coming back from there. But how does it feel on the ground in Iowa? Well, I, I wouldn't say that Donald Trump being the nominee is inevitable at this point. But, but as you point out, so much is going to happen in Iowa over the next six months, over the rest of this year, to really determine whether anyone else has a shot. So Ron DeSantis looks like he's got the best chance right now. If you look at polling, um, you know, it's, it's early, but it gives you a real sense that Donald Trump is, you know, double-digit margins ahead of anyone else in the pack, certainly of, of Ron DeSantis. And so Ron DeSantis came into the state this week. He's making his real first push to try and turn that around, to try and gain some steam. But, um, you know, I think what happens and whether he's able to pull together a credible ground game, a good campaign operation is going to have a lot to do with determining whether he's got a real shot at, at knocking off uh, Donald Trump as the front runner. So a Des Moines Register poll from March did show that support for Donald Trump is waning a bit in Iowa. Obviously, these things can go up and down through the caucus process. But the number of people who say they would definitely vote for him dropped by more than 20 points since June of 2021, from 69 percent to 47 percent. What do you think is behind that dip? And what groups has he been losing support with? Well, that's exactly right. And, and I think the important thing to note about polling is that this is really a snapshot in time. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily a predictor of what's going to happen on caucus day, but it's a really interesting snapshot in time, right, to see Donald Trump's support erode so much. We also saw his favorability numbers fall, his unfavorability numbers climb. You know, this is a point in time where people are starting to, you know, present some other options. For a while, it was just Donald Trump. Now, Iowa caucus goers have other choices that they can look mm -hmm. at. They're looking at Ron DeSantis. They're looking at Tim Scott. They're looking at Nikki Haley. And so all of a sudden, there's a lot more conversation about whether Donald Trump is the right choice. We also saw it come after a midterm election that was not as successful for Republicans, that national red wave did not materialize the way people expected. And a lot of people pointed some blame at Donald Trump for that. So I think overall, you're just really seeing his stock kind of fall a little bit as people are looking at, you know, is he a winner? Is he the best choice to defeat Joe Biden in 2024? They're looking at this race um, and the stakes are incredibly high for Republicans. They do not want to see Joe Biden back in the White House. So Donald Trump does always seem to defy gravity when it comes to evangelical voters. Um, his favorability sits at 58 percent with them in that same Des Moines Register poll. Uh, but what's striking to me is that there are a number of candidates who are now getting into the race who seem w they would more obviously appeal uh, to the evangelical vote. Who do you hear evangelicals in the state talking about in terms of candidates who are in or might get in that they might be excited about? Yeah, this is a super critical voting block here in this state. Iowa evangelical voters turn up in above average proportions. They, they helped push 
uh, Ted Cruz over the finish line in 2016. They've helped push candidates like Rick Santorum over the finish line. So it's really critical that these candidates have an in with evangelical voters. And as you mentioned, Donald Trump has kind of a complicated relationship there, right? He's not known as a particularly religious man, but he mm -hmm. did promise this, this group that he would appoint conservative justices to the Supreme Court. And of course, we saw that it led to the overturning of Roe versus Wade, which is a huge victory for, for them. So going into this election cycle, into this caucus cycle, Donald Trump is reminding them of those things that he's done. He's reminding them that he was the person who, uh, who put those justices there, who paved the way for the courts to overturn Roe versus Wade. He's, he's telling them that he's the most pro-life president who's ever, ever existed, who's ever served in office. And so we're seeing these other candidates come forward and try and try and present an alternative version. Tim Scott, for example, is someone who I think very authentically talks about his faith. And he's he's meeting with pastors behind the scenes. He's having some of these closed door meetings that aren't necessarily in the press, but that can go a long way to winning over some key influencers within this voting block. So he's someone who's making that pitch. Ron DeSantis, of course. We saw him here in Iowa just yesterday telling Iowa caucus goers that, you know, Donald Trump maybe isn't exactly as pro-life as, as he claims to be. Ron DeSantis signed a six-week abortion ban in Florida, which mm -hmm. Donald Trump criticized as possibly being too harsh. So his super PAC is passing out flyers at the Donald Trump event today as we speak that criticizes Donald Trump for not being uh you know, strong enough on, on pro-life issues. So we're seeing a lot of candidates trying to make inroads there and capitalize on that. I was going to ask you about that issue because it does feel like this year, the Republican primary, there is a bit of a divide. There's different positions. There's a range of positions on abortion. Uh, how are you seeing that play out? Is that uh, the number one issue, the number two? Where does it fall in the rank order as a, for Republican primary voters in, in Iowa? I think it's certainly in the top five, if not the top three. And, and for some people, this is the defining issue, right? This is mm -hmm. the issue that they're really going to caucus on um, that matters the most to them. And so you look, and, and Donald Trump would say he is saying to them, I've, I've proven that I'm pro-life. I have acted on this. I've been in office. You've seen what I've done. Everyone else is, is, a, is a guess, you know, especially as the conversation shifts to the general election where Republicans may need to bring in some more moderate Republicans who aren't as, you know, st uh, stringently pro-life, who may look at a six-week abortion ban as being too harsh, for example. So it's, it's an interesting conundrum, and I, I'm really interested to see how these candidates play it. Certainly in Iowa, this is a state, the primary voters here are interested in a candidate who's pro-life. So we'll see, um, you know, just how far these candidates lean into it. Brianne, you're going to have a very busy several months, but we look forward to speaking with you again. And so much for thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today.